Today I'm going to work some more in my fine line paint applicator pattern book. Did you all catch Marianne McMillan's fine line paint applicator pattern? She's following along. So she has inspired me. She's inspired me to keep going with these. And I like some of the things that she did. So I'm going to be playing off of a couple of those, Marianne. I put a link to Marianne's channel and her fine line paint applicator video in the description box below. So this is what I've done so far. This is a photographic memory album that I got at Goodwill, but it's the perfect size to do some sample patterns here to refer to. In the first video, I've done three of them. A basic lattice design, both the diagonal and the square, and then I enhanced it with dots. A scribble design, and then I enhanced it with little feathers around here. And then I did the loopy trim around the border. And then the last one was the lattice with floral. I wish you could feel how textured these pages are. I use plain craft paint, craft paint in my fine line paint applicators. It doesn't matter what kind. I've been using these apple barrel craft paints primarily, but I've gotten some Americana, which I think is a little bit thinner paint, and some craft smart that was gifted to me. I probably will not be using the craft smart to do these because I'm saving them to work in my reverse collage book. So I'm going to do three more designs today and I'm going to do them on the back of these three so that when you flip through you will see the designs on both the front and the back of the pages. So let's just get this out of the way. I'll just put it up here in the corner, and then I'm going to work on the back of this. Now, I've been leaving probably about a third of the page for documentation, maybe a little bit beyond a third, maybe about three-eighths of a page. <laughs> I'm just estimating. So I want to do the same thing over here, and I think... I think I will put the documentation still on the right-hand side and the pattern on the left-hand side. I'm going to start out with white on black. Let's get my other fine liners out of the way here. I think I'm zoomed in enough that you can see what I'm going to do. My fine line paint applicator is one of the first ones that I've used. And it just keeps going and going and going. And whenever I open it, I always say, if you fill these to put in fresh paint, because if you have old paint and it, if it's coagulated, it can get gummy and gooey and plug up your nozzle. But I think I'm okay there. And then when I start, I always take the cap and just kind of, it's just something I do. I just kind of move it up and down throughout the nozzle and that ensures that the pathway is cleared up and then I generally take and make sure that I'm getting a good flow by squeezing it over on a scrap piece of paper or on my drop paper something like that. So let's get started. I'm going to start out by dividing the page. I can kind of see right here where I have the division. So let's do that again maybe right in here. We're going to Divide it right down vertically here by just drawing a line. And it doesn't matter if your line is not perfect. I do keep a towel handy so that I can wipe off the nozzle if I need to. What I'm going to do with this design is just play with dots. Just dots on the page. Yes. Dots. You can make them, these are medium-sized. Of course, this is the standard tip with the orange 
yellow cap here. The standard nozzle is 18 gauge. Now you can make these medium dots and medium distance from each other. You can make them medium dots and very close to each other. Just, that's almost a drawing technique. The closer you put your lines together or your uh, elements, like in this case it's a dot, the more dense your area on your page is going to be something like this around the border of your page. Now these are fairly close together so it almost looks like a string of pearls doesn't it? Or you can see they're kind of weeping into each other. You can put them further apart such as that. You can make them and I would say just barely just barely put the nozzle down on your paper and just barely let that paint flow out I think the tiny ones are hard to make but I do like them once they're done let's put a tiny one there and there let's do a row of three of them Or you can make some really large dots just by drawing circles and coloring them in. And these are basically circles, but they are dots. And leave them unfilled in the same way with the medium dot. Let's make a round dot like this. I'm trying to keep the nozzle out of the wet paint. That's a very thick dot of paint. And you can take, you can do this with the nozzle, but here again, I do not like dragging my nozzle through wet paint because I feel like it clogs it up. But I'll take a pen, and I like these little pins with the feather leaf on them, and you can draw that paint out like this and make a little flower shape or a little if this were yellow it might be a sunshine this reminds me of the button bachelor button flowers that you see or maybe a dianthus flower that started with a dot of paint can do just about anything, any type of a design that that you like, <laughs> just by unconnected dots. Uh, and I'm going to leave it just like that.
you can just let your paint drip out of your fine line paint applicator in any way that it wants a little it's a little bit like this only I'm just kind of I don't know I think I'm doing it more randomly I think I was a little bit more controlled there I see this more as a drippy dot just, well let's just hold it down these are more drippy dots I call them drippy dots let's go back to this one and let's do an open circle and put dots in the center So I have large filled in dots, large unfilled dots, medium filled in dots, medium unfilled dots, tiny dots here, dots around the border of your page, and dots that are medium kind of spaced out, medium dots that are close together. I have dots, a filled in dot that I pulled the paint from the center of it and created a flower. I have sort of a star dot here where I just created a shape with the dots. And this is another flower type design where I created dots in the center of a larger unfilled dot and then I pulled the lines out. You can do a chain of dots, such as I'm doing here. Some of them may float together, those floated together, depending on how thick or thin your paint is. I just, I'm calling this a chain. And you can do on your border a dot dash dot dash another you can thing you can do is hold your nozzle close to your page let it drip as if you were going to draw a line and just pull it out it's kind of like a I say a um, candy kiss shape and you could probably do that just by doing it like that and pull it out a big dot a painty dot and then pull out a little shape there and I'm sure that you can think of a lot more things to do with dots than I can then I've shown here and if you do do like Marianne did she created a video and she came up with some things that inspired me and I love to see what people are are doing with these fine line paint applicators let's put basic this one away and let it dry now I'm going to work on the back of the scribble design here and Marianne inspired me she did black on black now she said her black was not totally black and she thought that her black would show up now I do know from experience that a wet paint will show darker than 
a dry paint. So even though this may show up a little, I have a suspicion that it will dry flat. So I'm just going to try some black on black here. Black on black, meaning black paint on black paper. And I'm going to first start out, well, my line is going to be imaginary down here because I don't want to put my hand in the paint. Let's start out by doing a, a diamond shape. See, and you can see that paint. That paint is, you can probably see it. I see the difference. Let's put a circle inside of the diamond. put this one out of the way let it dry I'm it will be very interesting to see how that black dries I might have to show you on the next video that I do and I'm just beginning to think of neat things to do with this this is so fun let's pull this one away and work on the last one if you're familiar with crochet work you will know the filet crochet. And so I'm going to simulate that here. And I'll just explain it to you as I go. It's a very basic crochet stitch. I'm just going to draw a line down there. And then I'm going to draw some horizontal lines across. And here again, I am... Don't worry about it if you drip anywhere on your page. It doesn't matter. You'll you'll probably incorporate that into your design in the end. And I am keeping my nozzle off of the page because these are pretty thick lines. And I just find that dragging this nozzle across the page seems to clog it up. And the other thing is if you don't want these little, I call them starting dots, <laughs> You can start off of the page, but just be aware that you have a, a bit of wet paint there if you do. I don't mind these. In some instances, they annoy me, but in, in an instant like this, I know that I'll be probably incorporating it into the design. And if you crochet a lot, you certainly know what a fillet crochet stitch is. Now, this is not how the crocheters would start something like this. They would start with a chain stitch at the bottom and then work their fillet stitch and then work it back this way on top of this row and then do another row and they'd keep building their rows up. But when I'm painting this, I don't have to do this. I can create all my rows at one time. And I think I'll start at the top of the page, and I'm going to start over to the left. I generally, if I were doing needlework, I would be starting at the right, but I'm going to try to keep my hand out of the paint as much as possible. And you can simulate like a double crochet just by kind of wiggling your paint there, and it kind of gives a thick line, or you can... Just kind of draw your line up this way, too. It just depends on what you like better, whether you really like that thick. But you do three of them. And I'm just going to draw my lines up there. I'm going to do a line at the very top of this, if I can. Don't worry if it goes off the edge of the page. This is just 
This is just experimenting, just drawing basic patterns. Now, I got three. Now, in my imagination, I'm going to skip three. I'm going to leave a space that where there would, could be three, what we would call in crochet, double or single stitches. I'm going to call them double here because they're fairly long. So I'm going to do another three. One, two, three. Skip three. One. Can you see how I put my little Picot stitches in between the blank ones? They don't always show up really good, but you can go back in like I'm doing here and just dot them in there. I think they just add a bit of fancy to the pattern. I'm going to call this basic And once we work several patterns, then we'll go in and show you how you can use them on your art journal pages. While I'm talking to you, I am, I am putting the, the nozzles back, the caps back into the nozzles here. Just kind of hold it on your index finger here. And... Sometimes you need to get it up to your eyes to, to get it in the nozzle, but you put that little wire inside of the nozzle and just kind of clean it out. These are ready to have more paint put in them, so I'll probably be taking these nozzles out and washing them all out. So we'll put that one there, this one here, and here is the black on black. And can you see, I can already tell in here where my lines are thinner and it's drying. It's a little bit harder to see. The big dots will settle down. And I have a feeling that this will be a little bit harder to see. However, however, we may come back to this technique and try another experiment with this. See where I wrote the Marriottier in here? It, it's really hard to see my writing, where it was a lot easier to see it when it was wet. But how fun to try this. Now, a black on gray would look nice. And if I tip it toward the light, I'm not sure what you're seeing. If I tip it toward the light, I can see the lines a little bit more. But that was an interesting experiment, and it probably depends on the type of paper you're using. I'm just using this paper out of my photograph album. So these are the three designs that I did today. I did the dots, the basic dots, and I did do a little pattern in here. I did the black and on black with the Renaissance design, and I may come back to that design and do it maybe in the next lesson, a black on, a white on black, so there, or a brown on black, or something where you can see the design a little bit more. And then over here, I did the basic fillet. So I hope that you are enjoying this. I know I'm enjoying just doing it. It's, it's a nice review for me, but also... I get inspired. This, this I'm calling an ironwork design. I know you can't see it too well, but this would look really nice, black on white, or even white on black, 
and I'll be experimenting with that a little bit more. The dots, the dots are kind of just scattery designs, but hey, they're there. And if when we start using them on an art journal page, if you're doing some work where you're using your fine line paint applicator, especially for the borders, I think the dots are really nice for the borders. I always come back to these picots. You add those little dots in there, and it just takes it from plain to fancy. Fancy work. So thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next page.